Yo, what's good, everybody? This your girl, Allie Nick, coming to give you another Tyler Perry's Sisters review. If this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning family member, then you already know what it is and what it always will be. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you choose to, tell somebody to tell somebody. And y'all know how we do. We're going to get right into this messy, messy thing. Now, this is the synopsis for season seven, episode two. And the title of this episode is Drunk in Love. The sisters' first boozy brunch with Fatima opens the door to new perspectives, salacious topics, and everyone's take on Karen's pregnancy. Gary goes from blaming Penelope for his creep-like behavior to dodging the feds. That bastard. Oh, Gary. Oh, he ooh, he touches a nerve. But We're going to get into him a little later. So it appears that the sisters are meeting for brunch and for the first time, Fatima will be joining them. Now, even though it's been a three month jump, I do find it interesting because the last time all these women were together, Fatima called all them hoes. Every last one. She said, y'all hoes like y'all friend Andy. <laughs> and I'm just like, so um, we going to act like sis never said that. So y'all going to let bygones be bygones? Okay. Now, you know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. A lot of things can happen within three months. And I want them to do like a, um, what they call it? I want them to do a montage. That's what it is. To kind of bring us, you know what I'm saying? Like make us abreast to what has happened within these three months. Because I don't understand how we could go from her calling them hoes to us having a kumbaya moment with baby girl at brunch. I don't know. Hopefully we get a chance to see that. Maybe we won't. But, you know, like I said, a lot of things can happen within three months. Now, I can see Karen and Fatima being cordial, but I cannot see them being friends. And if that's what the new writers are trying to sell, they are going to have to work extremely hard for that to be something that I buy into. Um, one of the main reasons why for me and this, like I said, this is for me. One of the main reasons why I do not want Fatima and Karen to be friends is because of the common denominator also called Zach. <laughs> because Zach will lie and throw Karen under the bus with the quickness, with no hesitation. He is quick to blame this woman for everything when he doesn't want to take responsibility and accountability for his actions. We have seen that happen time and time again. And that's going to always be an issue if these two women are, in fact, trying to have a friendship with each other. I don't even think that's something I want to see. Is that me being toxic? Like, don't get me wrong. I don't want there to be any issues between Fatima and Karen. I don't want there to be, like, you know, this rah-rah that exists between them. But I'm just not, I don't, I don't know. if I don't know if I can buy into the friendship. Now, within the last couple episodes of season six, I believe that we were seeing Karen extend the olive branch. She wasn't trying to bring trouble. She wasn't trying to stir up anything, especially when she saw that, you know, Zach does have a child and he's being raised in an environment that's not conducive to that of, you know, growing and developing a healthy child. And I think that completely changed her mindset on the way that she was presenting herself to Fatima and Zach because it was like a, it was a immediate change in her behavior, in her tone, and in her action. So that is going to be something that's interesting to see. Now it says that they're going to be, you know what I'm saying, having salacious topics at this brunch, which for these group of women means sex. <laughs> that's all it means. I said I am more than sure. They probably going to ask Karen what does a uh, pregnancy sex feels like now that she's showing, and Karen going to tell them she don't know because she ain't had none. But I can imagine that will probably be a question that gets, you know, asked at this particular brunch. And so it says that we're going to get their take on Karen's pregnancy. Now, I ain't going to lie. Now, by this time, Karen should be about five and a half months pregnant. I would not want to hear anyone's take on what's growing inside of my body when I'm almost six months pregnant. What do y'all have to say? So that is going to be an interesting dialogue. I am actually looking forward to hearing 
what they have to say about this woman's pregnancy and what their take is on it. Because if it's not about encouraging and building up and positive affirmations, I would not want to hear it. But that's just me. Now, let's go on to this bastard of all bastards. Now, I'm trying to understand how dare Gary, just how dare him attempt to blame Penelope for his creep like behavior. And the thing is, Gary is far beyond a creep. Gary is a diabolical demon from the pits of hell that was released, that was released to leash havoc on the lives of innocent, (laughs) of innocent women. And don't get me wrong. Not all of the women are innocent, but Penelope, as far as what we've been shown about this woman, she is completely innocent in this entire situation. And the fact that he is blaming this woman for his disgusting behavior is absolutely something I would expect Gary to do. Now, when I think about Penelope at this time, she should have already had her child. So her baby is fresh, good and fresh out the womb. And she has to deal with this bastard. So it lets me know that she's still intertwined with Gary in some way. And I hope it's not in a relationship. Now, I get the fact that he's the father of her child. But even then, baby, we go to court. You might have to have um, supervised visitations because I would not want you near my child. And then it's Gary. He don't take care of the children that he got. So he probably wants nothing to do with the child that he has with Penelope. But it's just the fact that Gary is just blaming this woman for his. He always has to seek blame someplace else other than looking inwardly. Now. Gary is dodging the feds yet again. And this is nothing more than what we've already seen him do to Andy at the end of season one, beginning of season two. All this girl stuff was seized by the feds. She couldn't even go into her house. Her bank accounts were frozen. She had no money. Remember, she had to use uh, Sabrina's money to get something to wear to work. She had nothing. And I said, poor, he probably about to do the same thing to Penelope. I hope not. But whatever Gary is doing when it comes to the feds and him doing things that he shouldn't be doing, money laundering, ain't no telling else what Gary is involved with. I hope they put his ass under the jail to where he can't even get out. We've had enough of him now. We've had we've had enough of Gary. Don't we don't care about him. We absolutely do not care about him. But dodging the feds, y'all catch him, arrest him. Now, y'all not arrested this fool once before. You had him at gunpoint, you arrested him, and put his ass in jail, and you let him out. Let's not repeat the same thing again, feds, okay? Do your job. Keep Gary in the cell away from humanity where he belongs. And that's the synopsis for episode two of season seven entitled Drunk and love. Thank you guys for listening. I'll be dropping the synopsis for episode three and four a little later. So y'all be on the lookout for that. And until next time, I will holler at y'all later. And y'all be safe out there. Bye.